Hi everybody, today we're going to talk a little bit about the switch controls on the iOS, on every, the new ones as well, but everything since about iOS 7. Um, and we're going to go through and show how we can use a Bluetooth keyboard, a standard Bluetooth keyboard, to become a switch for that. Let's get started. To get to the switch controls in iOS, go to the settings screen, and then under general, you'll see accessibility. Click on accessibility and right in the middle here, you'll see switch control. Now don't turn it on right away. You need to make sure you set up your switches uh, when you start. But when you go into switch control, you'll see a lot of different settings. And I encourage you to play with these with the understanding that make sure you know how to turn switch control off with the switches you're using. Because sometimes it can make it very difficult to turn switch control off if you've decided to make the whole screen a touch switch or a head gesture switch or things like that. So with that in mind, um, I'm not going to turn on switch control, but I am going to walk you through a few of the settings here. So one is the, the switches. So right here in the, in the center area, I'm going to click um, switches, and you'll see you can add a new switch. Now, a lot of us know we can do this, and we think of these in terms of um, AT switches. We'll think an AbleNet switch or something like that. Uh, but the way Apple has actually implemented this in iOS is that those things are just Bluetooth HID devices. And what an HID device is, a human interface de uh, device, and it's either a mouse or a keyboard. And this all came out of the USB standard. It's been reused in Bluetooth. And um, most, there may be more effective interfaces for um, iOS switches. There may be a true switch interface. There may be benefits to using that. It may be more reliable. It may have analog features and things like that. Uh, they don't document it as well as I'd like. It's been hard to find documentation on this. But um, one thing I do know is Bluetooth switch, Bluetooth keyboards do act as switches. Okay, so that's what we're going to show today. Um, when I talk about Bluetooth keyboards, uh, probably most of you will think in terms of something like this. So this is a Bluetooth keyboard. It is uh, the kind of keyboard you'd see on your desk, uh, standard 104 key or so keyboard. It pairs via, via Bluetooth, and you can use these on your iOS devices. They'll work just fine, but they're pretty big. I'm going to show you a few other kinds of Bluetooth keyboards today. All of them work exactly the same way as far as pairing and using them as switches. This is another one we'll talk about in detail later, but this is a uh, media PC um, a keyboard. So this is meant for having a built-in mouse and keyboard and um, it's also backlit so you can see it in the dark and things like that. It's meant for people who are using your um, PCs to drive your television and things like that. This one's about $15. Um, the, the, the larger one here I think was something like 12 on sale on Amazon, but they're not expensive. Um, this is the last one. It's the one we're going to actually pair to our phone and use as a switch. So this is a numeric keypad. And it's small enough, you know, it's not that much bigger than the iPhone we're using. Um, I think that there's about 16 keys that you can use on these. Um, you've got your number keys, the star, the slash, um, the plus, the minus, and the enter. So we're going to use this as a two-switch um, a, a two switch device on iOS. And we're going to make the, the uh, zero button the, um, the clock, so it moves from, from cell to cell, and we use the period as the selection button. And um, we're going to talk about how to do this on the iOS side, and later I'll show you some more interesting ways that you can use this functionality in terms of making something that's a little more effective for your switch users. Okay, So let's start with adding a new switch. To, so before we add a new switch, we have to make sure that my iPhone knows about this device, and right now it doesn't. So we're going to go back to our settings screen. We're going to go to Bluetooth up at the top there. It is on, and in this case, I'm going to initiate pairing by holding down this button. And the instructions for this device tell me to do that. Um, and uh, this has turned a little blue light on, and you'll see on my iPhone it says iClever keypad, keypad. So I'm going to click on that, tap on that on the device. It's going to pair to it. And when it's done, it's going to show up at the top, and it's going to show up as connected. Now this is a normal keyboard. If I type on this, it will send keystrokes into uh, my into my device. Okay. So now I'm going to go back out and um, 
go down to general accessibility and now down to switch control and we're going to add a switch okay so we're going to see add a switch we're going to add an external switch and now it just says activate your external switch all it means is press a button so we're going to press the zero you'll notice it just created a new switch we'll call that zero hit save and now we have an external switch it's asking us what do we want this switch to do okay so in this case we want to move to the next item because that's going to step through all of the the options uh, on the screen we'll add another new switch external it says activate it we'll hit the dot and we'll call that one dot dot we'll hit save what do we want it to do we want it to select the item okay so now I've got two switches set up I've got zero for moving from item to item I've got dot for selecting an item and now we're gonna go back to switch control and we're gonna turn it on now I've turned on switch control and it says be careful make sure you know how to turn it turn it on and I'm gonna hit um, OK so now you'll see that it started going through if if you look carefully it's in automatic mode so it's automatically going from one to the next so I'm gonna go down to scanning style I'm gonna set it to manual sc scanning and go back so now every time I hit the zero you'll see it's gonna go from one to the next and it's gonna, I'm not hitting the button it's not moving forward when I hit the button it goes to the next uh, item on the list and so let's say I want to go and turn switch control off I tap on this it's gone to switch control when I hit the, the, the dot it opens up the menu and I hit tap to make it go again and it turned off switch control now if you've never used switch control on a Mac there are lots of, of videos out there um, that you, you can go find that are, are useful on this but this is how you can set up a Bluetooth key, keypad to actually um, be switches on iOS switch control. So now, a couple of questions people ask, well, didn't I just disable my zero and my dot key? No, if I actually go in and, and use the keypad on here or even use another keyboard, uh, it has only assigned the dot and the zero from this device to be a switch. So I'm dedicating these two buttons. In fact, these other buttons still work. So if you've chosen buttons that you don't think you're going to use, um, or if you're just going to make this a dedicated device, uh, that's, that's a good way to go about this. Um, you don't have to worry about the fact that it now thinks that every zero or dot you hit is, is going to um, mean activate a switch. So I'm going to go ahead and just real quickly go um, to another application so you can see uh, how the switch interface works and uh, I'm gonna pause this for a second alright we are now in the notes application and I'm just gonna use the switch interface to type the word it works the words it works uh, now I'm not a proficient switch user I'm sure there's lots of people who will be able to do this much faster but I'm gonna use the the switches on here just kinda show uh, how this what this looks like and how it works Let's see if I can be, let you guys see this pretty well so as I hit the, the zero, it's going to start scanning. You'll see it's going row to row. And there's a lag uh, on the recording on this. So um, I'm just going to go to the I. So I'm going to hit that first row, select it by hitting the dot. And now I'm going to tab over two. I'm going to get the I there's a long lag on the display so um, it is much faster on the iPhone I promise uh, so there's the eye I need a space bar so I'm gonna hit tap to get my eye and go down to the bottom there's my space Hit it again to select the space bar now I want to get the W so I hit uh, tap 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 there's my W 
I'm trying to talk through this so you can see that it is faster than what you're seeing on the screen. That's my row, that's my section, that's my letter. There's the O, so that's my row, that's my section, that's my letter. So you'll see that it's segmenting this up. Uh, the, I need to go to the next row and there's my section, there's my letter, and there's it works. There's the words it works using these two buttons only. Now, that's not proficient, that's not easy, but uh, the switch control in iOS is one of the better ones. It, is, it works in almost every app. Uh, in games, very often it has the, it'll draw the rows and the columns and uh, let you select any point and things like that. So this shows basically how you can use any Bluetooth keyboard to be um, a, a multi-switch device. Now, uh, if you're a maker, how does this help you? Probably the most important way this helps you is not to use this device. So uh, this is great for testing it. It's great for showing how it works. Um, and uh, it might be useful if you've got somebody with limited uh, mobility but good use maybe of one hand. Uh, you could have several switches and set them all up to do different things. You have, uh, there's a lot you could do with this. But as a maker, this isn't what's key about it. Uh, what's key about it is you can now do anything that behaves like a Bluetooth keyboard can send interfaces to your phone. Now, what does that mean? Well, one, one thing that you could look at is you could look at this device. Now, this device um, has a few things going for it that are kind of cool. First, there's lots and lots of buttons. There's a full key, keyboard here and a mouse. But also, it's got a charging port. And inside, it's got a lithium polymer bat battery and a charging uh, circuit for it. So it is, inside of this is absolutely everything you need electronics-wise to make uh, a multi-switch interface that is dedicated and has ports that you can plug switches into. The only thing you'd need to add would be a container, uh, an enclosure, and the actual jacks that you would plug your, your switches into. So that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. Um, another, uh, another thing that's interesting about this is it's not that hard to tap into. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take some pictures of this and do a, a full write-up on how to convert this into a multi-switch uh, multi device that is dedicated. So that'll be one of our guides. We'll basically be buy the $15 keyboard, um, crack it open, break the seal, void the warranty, and very easily make a multi uh, a multi port uh, switch interface bluetooth switch interface that will work on the ipad now interestingly these aren't the only kinds of devices that act like bluetooth uh, keyboards in fact this is a very interesting one right here so this is a device called a blue fruit feather and i'm going to show it to you here on the screen I'll bring up a picture from the website of the company that sells it. So this little chip right here is actually a microcontroller, uh, Arduino compatible microcontroller. It also has on it a Bluetooth uh, sending interface. It's an IoT device. It's about $30, so it's not, it's not dirt cheap, but it's certainly more reasonable than a lot of other options out there. It's got a lot of things going for it. You'll notice that I've got a um, you'll notice that I've got a, a battery attached to it. It actually will charge a lithium polymer battery. Um, it has a significant amount of, of horsepower for a device, and any dev anything that you connect to this um, can be used as a switch. So you could very easily put a three and a half uh, millimeter jack, an eighth inch jack, which is the standard for AT switches. Attach them on, you see on the right it says uh, any of those, those uh, ports there, any of the pins, it says A1, A2, A3. All of those, up to 20 of them can be used uh, as inputs. So if there's up to 20, uh, what's called GPIO pins on that. So you could actually have this thing drive a 20 port um, uh, switch interface that talks to your iOS device. Now in this case, I've actually got this wired to go to a different device. It's to go to one of these. 
So this is actually an EMG switch that the makers in the world can buy for um, about $37, $39. And I will put this on my, on my hand and you'll see, I don't know if you can see the, um, I don't know if you can see the lights on it or not. When I move my hand, it'll actually trigger that light right there. Oops. Right there, whenever I move. I don't know. There you go. And so I've actually worked with uh, Jonathan Lasco in Maryland to set up one of these EMG switches for uh, his son Max to be able to control the IO iOS uh, switch control interface. Now, he's young. He's four or five. There's certainly a long way to go on training. Uh, but as far as the hardware goes, it's a $30 solution for the chip you see on the screen, which is the Bluetooth interface, another $40 or so for the EMG sensor, and for $80 you may have a solution that at the very least you can start to work on switch control uh, with a child, with, a, with an adult, uh, um, someone with aphasia, somebody who's had a stroke. So uh, I hope this gives you an idea of some of the options that are available here. Uh, if you've got questions, uh, by all means, reach out to us on AT Makers. Now you can go to atmakers.org, and that's evolving. We're going to put a lot more projects up there in the very near future. In addition, go to our Facebook group. Just search for AT Makers on Facebook. It's an it's a open, so open group, so you can read everything. Uh, we do moderate the, the posts to keep them appropriate. But uh, it's someplace where I think if you're interested in this kind of thing, you're going to find the kind of people who can help you with it. I hope you found this interesting and that uh, you try out using your, your Bluetooth keypads as switch interfaces and I'd love to see what you're going to do with it.